video from a guy that I know I know real well. Uh, this is the album cover. His name's Andy Coran, and he's from Toronto. Here is that is that reflecting? It's a really it's a really neat album cover. Andy used to be in a band called Coney Hatch, and uh, which which had which had, which did pretty well for themselves. And uh, he's got a solo project. This will be out real shortly. For those people who don't know who Andy Curran is, and the first thing you know is is the video for Life's Love. Who, who where were you, where'd you come from? Um, well, we'd have to go back to around 1982. I formed a band uh, called Coney Hatch with Dave Ketchum, Carl Dixon, Steve Chelsky. Uh, we did a whole whack of tours: Judas Priest, uh, Crocus, Iron Maiden, Accept, um, you name it. We played with them. Looking at the video for License to Love, you can tell that you know you guys have a sense of humor in your writing and things like that, oh, which is always really good to have a sense of humor. You think that's important when you write a song? Well. I think that's one of one of the things I wanted to change after I, I left Coney Hatch was having a bit of a, a, you know a, a fun with the thing and uh, not taking it so seriously, not the the sucked in cheeks and right. and the, the the poses and stuff like that. I mean, it's rock and roll is meant to to be fun. So Andy Curran came by with uh, Rick Emmett, uh, great one-two double bill actually, a nice rock and roll tour through Vancouver, mulling over what to call it, and all of a sudden it came to us just like that. Let's call it Andy Curran. In other words, you couldn't think of anything better than that? Well, you want to know the dirt yeah, on yeah. it, really? Yeah. Really, the album was supposed to be called Every Dog Has Its Day. Yeah. And we had uh, we had the artwork finished for it and everything, and Salty Dog comes out with this album called Every, Every Dog, Dog Has Its Day. Day. The, album were, the album artwork's finished, everything. You're like, oh, man. Did you have any idea how hard it was going to be, the, the whole road to being a solo artist? Never in a million years. I... I it, a lot of things have changed since the days of Coney. There's a lot of guys out there doing what you're doing, uh, have done and will do. Uh, how do you separate yourself from the pack? How is it that you step aside and say, no, this is me? I think it, um, for me anyway, it'll have to be the tunes and um, and really the live band. I, I've got a, uh, I'm going to brag at this point and tell you I've got a, a, an excellent live band. and playing with um, Simon Brierley, who is currently with uh, Lee Aaron and Partland Brothers. I've got Glenn Milcham, who uh, played with Andrew Cash and is still playing with Andrew Cash. Mike Burke from uh, Lisa Del Bello. So all these guys have a ton of experience under their belt. And um, at this point, I'm prepared to sell it live off the stage, but I'm going to have to have some good songs under my belt. And my special guest, Andy Curran. Andy Curran. Andy Curran. Andy Curran. Uh, you guys know Andy Curran as uh, one of the founding members or the founding member of Coney Tony Hatch. Um, as he's talking about this new solo album, I wanted to keep it raw and guitar oriented, and it certainly is wall to wall. Uh, it was co produced by Andy Curran and uh, Bill Petri, and was recorded in Mississauga at uh, Metalworks and also in Oshawa at Quest Studios. First week of August 1989, Quest Recording Studios in Oshawa, where apparently. They're cutting an album. So let's go inside now. Here we are, 215 Toronto Street, and see what the action is like. Is Steamer with his ready to Anvil shirt on. We're William right. Eaton Hogg Petrie. <laughs> you know, I think about the writing process of that first solo record and probably the most re rewarding part about it, which I didn't realize at the time. For the first time ever, I really didn't have to worry about what three other band members were going to have to say. All right, Braxley in the control room now. Another segment correspondent, Steady Cam Mosquito. There's Paul, there's Billy. Wave, wave, boys. It was very much um, the first time maybe I had full control and didn't have to question or compromise where, what songs would be on the record, what direction it would go in. And I, and I look back at that and I go, my God, that that was so awesome that I got to be in the driver's seat for that whole record. This recording stuff's real interesting, ain't it? Ten years from now, this stuff will be out of date. Despite not knowing that I was in this headspace, 
I look at tracks like I Got This Feeling and Moonbeam in particular, those two, and I and I start to think that maybe they were just a little bit more alternative and, and less sort of what I used to call cock rock. But much to my surprise, we immediately just started getting a boatload of airplay with License to Love, No Tattoos, Let Go. We ended up getting some amazing support from much music so all of a sudden i look back at that short period and we had three top 10 songs at radio in canada we had two videos on much music getting invited to open for rush on the roll the bones tour and playing with rick Emmett's solo band and playing with glass tiger and um haywire so when the entire chapter was over we had been on the road for about 18 months that whole hurricane rocket ride that happened so quickly ended up getting me two juno award nominations uh, the nominees for Best Hard Rock Metal Album of the Year are... Nominated for Best Hard Rock Metal Album and uh, Most Promising Male Vocalist, which the latter of those two is quite funny because Most Promising usually goes to a newbie on the block, yet I had been around six or seven years with Coney Hatch already. Through all of this, and, and especially with the much music airplay, I did a couple interviews with a VJ by the name of Dan Gallagher. We became instant best friends and I would get calls from Dan. Most of the time I think maybe guests had fallen through and he would be like, Andy, what are you doing today? Here we are, uh, we're in my, uh, in my suite, actually this is Brian Houston's bed and uh, Andy Curran, of course you know Andy from... Uh, Dan and I had so much fun together and we actually even formed a little band together called uh, Dan Gallagher's Beat Heathens and, and we would go out and play cover tunes and that friendship is something that I hold near and dear to my heart. What an amazing friendship. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Congratulations, dude. Thank you. On the Juno Award. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Can I thank somebody who I didn't thank, get? Didn't thank him. There, it's easy. I would like to thank Stumpy Joe Milchum, Stumpus <laughs> Christus Poundus Maximus the Third. Mosquito and Mikey Burke. I love all of those guys. <laughs> and uh, but somebody got to ask you. You, you: you do this record and uh, you do the solo album, and then you win a Juno. Now you got to write the new record. What are you doing? Well, for the first time, we're writing as a band because I obviously um, these guys weren't around when I was writing for the first record. So uh, it's kind of cool. I'm writing with Simon and Mike, and um, we just, it's it's the sound is is very similar, but I'm getting the input of those guys, so that's kind of new. But I've got tons of stuff from from way back when when I was working with Kim Mitchell. So there's lots of stuff in the cupboard that I'm going to pull out. I guess looking back 30 years later, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to remix these tracks? I got in touch with a, a friend of mine, Vic Florencia, and I asked Vic what he thought about taking a look at this record, and, and he loved that idea. So that was the mindset going into this. Let's give it a bit of a freshen up. Let's give it a bit of a 2023 vibe on it. And I think about, you know, that ride that started at Metalworks. And as I was going through this process and working with the team, one or two of the people said, you know, wouldn't it be great, Andy, if you could record a new song with the original lineup? And I said, well, I don't have a lot of new material right now, but I do have some old demos. And I specifically remember this song called Looking for Love. And so I ended up calling Simon Briarly and Glenn Milcham. And I asked them, I said, guys, what do you think about the concept of us going back to where it all began, which was at Metalworks in Mississauga, and we'll go into the old Neve room, which has a beautiful old console that sounds warm and very analog feeling. And let's go in and record that song. We, I can't even remember why we didn't put it on the tab for using it for the original record, other than it sounded very much like no tattoos, it kind of has that driving ACDC sound to it. So I called my buddy Sean Kelly, who's an amazing guitarist and, and has been doing some work with me with Coney Hatch. And, and bingo, we had the lineup for the 30 years later, you know, three quarters of the original band that recorded all of those tracks back in the day. Here we are back in Metalworks. And, and not only were we back where it all started, we're recording a song that was recorded as a demo 30 years ago. And so that was damn cool. 
So here we are in Metalworks, and we're about to record a 30-year-old demo called Looking for Love. The lyrics for that song were inspired by me reading the back pages of Now magazine, and I think it was an adult classified dating site where you could put your profile up and somebody would read about you and then you could get in touch with them. You know, it's like early online dating. And 30 years later, I'm like, well, wait a second. This song is even more relevant now than it was back then because it was all hidden on the back pages of Now Magazine. But now with the whole dating app thing, the topic and the subject matter of looking for love is super relevant now, maybe if not more so. I think it was pretty cool that I didn't have to rewrite all the lyrics for it. The process of engineering the track and, and trying to maybe replicate the spirit of what the original record, how it sounded and everything. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about the gear and luckily for me, one of my best buddies is a guy by the name of Alex Lifeson and he kindly offered to loan me some gear for the recording and he has his own amplifier line called Lurks. So we borrowed a, a Lurks head and we borrowed his mess of boogie, the matchless amp, a uh, cabinet that sounded amazing and, and I really wanted to make sure that those guitar tones sounded very real and not hyped up and I just didn't want anything to sound metal I wanted it to sound more hard rock you know when I put this hat on when I did the year question for rain okay. are you serious yeah. I get the, the, the changed heads yeah well because you know it's, uh, makes me feel important yeah you are kind of Taking this out of the case to warm up. A, a trade secret. <laughs> Vic Florency is just about to show you. Is it, is, yeah. is this, you two just, fingers. You just gotta be careful. As long as there's two fingers. fingers. It's a long, ongoing joke. Mm -hmm. Two fingers. Sometimes if you want it done right, you have to do it yourself. By the way, yep. Um, maybe just just give me a little cue. Just before. I mean, I guess I could go into verse two, but if we want to. Underground, looking in the light. Wrong tale. Can I listen to that one more time, buddy, please? I gotta say that I was uh, kind of freaked out a little bit because it's not like I'm an active touring musician all the time. And, and, and I thought to myself, well, damn, I haven't screamed my head off like this for a long time. On the ground, looking in the lost and found.
everybody else said in the studio that day, wow, dude, you did a good job. All day long. People start saying to you, you, you know, what's next? What, what, what does the future hold for you, Andy? And that's been a big question mark for me for a long time. I think my passion as a music fan, that's, that's the root of it all. I, I love music. I love listening to it. So the future for me, certainly, you know, I've got Coney Hatch going. Now there's this 30th anniversary project that's that's going to be released and is out there and is that going to spawn some interest those but in terms of, of what the future holds for me and I just feel blessed and I feel lucky and I, again I think I've led a charmed life and, and if I can keep making music I'm going to do that as long as I can is so what does my future hold maybe my answer is how long is a piece of string in what way is the wind blowing today <laughs> so I don't know. Let's, I'll tell you what it holds when I wake up tomorrow. Here I am in my room. Comfy, cozy, suburban Mississauga. Look at that. Whoa. 20 after 3. It's been a long day. It's been a hard day. It's been a fun day. Yes, this is what it's like to be a recording artist with all my pals. And, uh, well, what can I say? I've got one consolation, knowing that uh, at least when I come home, I'm not alone. Oh, hi, honey. How are you? Still awake? Oh, yeah, there she is. Okay. Well, we're going to sign off, kids, so uh, take care of yourselves, and uh, we will, too. We'll see you later.